Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock so we can figure out whether it's a buy or a sell. At the end of the video, we're going to look at the financial ratios, leave a comment, and I'll be sure to answer. The company we're going to look at today is Washington Prime Group. This is a REIT that owns 104 shopping centers. This is a list of some of their bigger shopping centers. Maybe it's in your town. So I'll just go through it real slow. You could always pause the video. You can see some in Indiana, New York, Ohio, Virginia, Illinois, Texas, Tennessee, Minnesota, Maplewood Mall, North Town Mall in Minnesota, Orange Park Mall in Orange Park, Florida. They have Hawaii too, Pearl Ridge Center, Seminole Town Center in Florida, Waterford Lakes Town Center in Florida, Westminster, California, Whitehall, Pennsylvania. So let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of 127 spot $8 million. It's a really small company. See, it's a micro cap. It's under 300 million market cap. Let's see what they're trading at. 68 cents. So that's one share of stock. So this is a penny stock. Penny stock means it trades below $5. The way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's exactly what we're doing in this video. Let's pull their actual free cash flow. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Capital expenditures are investments in property, plan, and equipment. Let's get their net income. That's on their income statement. We also need the revenue. That's also on the income statement. The revenue is the rent and lease payments this company receives from the tenants in its shopping center. Let's look at the numbers. They have positive free cash flow every year, which is great. Also positive net income. 2019 didn't seem like such a great year. Their sales are going down each year, which isn't good to see. Hmm. Let's look at a capital structure. They pay $153 million of interest on their debt. And let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet. We'll go to the liability section. Long term debt $3 billion. They don't have any short term debt. They pay 5% interest on their debt. Let's get the beta so we can figure out the cost of equity. Beta of 1.5, so the stock moves about one and a half times the market. Let's also get their current assets. We need to calculate the current ratio later, and current assets is part of that equation. That's on the balance sheet. 200 million of current assets. That's 41 million cash, 82 million of net receivables. This is how much money other companies owe them. And their current liabilities is 264 million. Let's see what that is. 260 million of accounts payable. That's how much they owe other companies. 796 million of equity. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. 202 million of common stock. Negative 655 million of retained earnings. Because retained earnings are your prior net incomes minus your prior dividends. And REITs pay out at least 90% of their income in dividends and negative 5 million of accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's get their operating income 92 million. Let's look at a capital structure 79% debt, cost of debt is 5%, 21% equity, cost of equity is 13.8%, and the WAC is 6.8%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. As you can see, the terminal value is the same or even lower than some of the prior values is because I reduced the terminal value based on the market cap if it's really low and also if they have a lot of debt, which they do. So it's a pretty conservative model. When we discount these numbers back to today, we get a value of the company of $363 million. We divide that by 188 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of 193, 
they're trading at 68 cents, so they're trading at a 65% discount, so it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're saying 105, so they're also saying the stock is undervalued. Just because things aren't going so well, their revenue is down, doesn't mean the stock is too expensive. It's come down so much in price that it's become a really good value. You can see it's way higher a few years ago, but I would expect shopping centers to really struggle. So that's why I think this stock keeps getting further and further pushed down. But if it gets through coronavirus in somewhat decent shape, it should make you lots of money. Let's look at the financial ratios. Bad PE, amazing price of sales, amazing price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 30. So investors are paying $30 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.2. So investors are paying only 20 cents for $1 of sales. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.2. So investors are paying 20 cents for $1 book value. A bad current ratio, a bad interest coverage ratio, and a bad ROA. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. They can only return 1% to their equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they cannot cover their interest payments. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Agree Realty, Federal Realty, Mace Rich, Realty Income, Tanger Outlets, and Simon Property Group. And Washington is right here at the end. And if Washington has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. When looking at REITs, you should always look at funds from operations. Funds from operations is your net income plus depreciation amortization minus gains on sale of real estate. And this ratio is the price of the stock over funds from operations per share. And the lower, the better. And Washington Group is in really good shape. Mainly because the stock prices come down so much, it makes these ratios look amazing. Their PE is higher than the average, not that much higher. They're at 29, the average is 24. They have the best price of sales and price to book. Their current ratio is worse than the average. Their ROE is much worse than the average. They're higher in debt, and they have the lowest market cap of any of the companies. I've seen companies like Denberry who have these amazing ratios but then they go bankrupt because right before you go bankrupt, your stock price is driven down so much that these ratios look amazing, but they are actually not in good shape. So you have to look kind of behind the curtain and just figure out, make sure everything's okay with the company. And I'm not saying that's the case with Washington Prime Group, but I'd be a little concerned with their revenue falling and such a low market cap. They may not make it through the pandemic alive. I calculated a 28% chance of default within the next 12 months. Let me know what you think of the video, leave a comment, I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching.